please make sure you have your copy of the assignment Reactivity of Metals. What we're going to do is review some of the reactions. On the data and observations page, we made some observations the other day by watching a demonstration video for the first three elements. We'll review those first and then I'll show you the results of reactions for the other metals uh, that I recorded. So, in the demonstration video, using elements that were too dangerous for us to have in, in the lab, what we observed was that three elements, lithium, sodium, and potassium, combined with water, differed in how reactive they were. Potassium was the most reactive of the three. When it was put into the water, it exploded. Sodium was very reactive. It sizzled very strongly, um, but it didn't explode. It moved around a lot much more than the first element that was tested, lithium, which did fizz and move around, but not quite as much as sodium and definitely not as reactive as potassium. So our goal is to compare how reactive the different elements are, different metals, looking at uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, manganese, iron, nickel, and copper. I'll show you a demonstration video of the last six metals that were tested at the lab benches by combining them with water and combining them with hydrochloric acid to see how much fizz and how much heat they made. Let's take a look at the reactions. I've set up my project so that I have the metals magnesium, calcium, manganese, iron, nickel, and copper and then I have sets of cups and in these cups I'm going to add water and in these cups I'm going to add hydrochloric acid and the metals will look at the surfaces to see uh, if there's any evidence of fizz and we'll feel the cups to feel if there's any evidence of heat. Now when I do these I'm going to do the first three together and look at those results together and then I'll do the last three together and look at their results together. So I'll break this up into two parts. So the first step I'm going to add water to each of these three just enough to cover the metals. Don't want to drown them. We still want to be able to see what's going on in there and then we'll check and see if there's any reaction going on. We'll do the same with the acid, just enough to cover the metals, and then we'll look to see what we can observe. Now right away you can hear that there's some fizzing going on in the ones that have the acid in them. If I take a look at the, the one that has the magnesium, if you can focus on that, there's quite a bit of fizzing going on there. If I feel the cup, it's getting a little bit warm. You can see some, some smoke even. This one right here is the calcium. Far more vigorous reaction. And when I feel it, it's getting hot. Pretty hot too. I don't want to hold on to that too long. And the manganese. That one is also fizzing along. But it, it doesn't feel hot. So between the three of them, the calcium reacts the most. It makes a lot more fizz and it's very hot. The magnesium, it's also reacting quite vigorously. It's warm and uh, oh, look at it's all gone too. It completely reacted. That was pretty fast. And the manganese is reacting um, vigorously but with less heat and it's not all gone yet. So I could rank them in the order of increasing or decreasing reactivity. Now let's take a look at the water reactions. Now these don't look like there's a whole lot going on, so I'm going to put them under the microscope so that you can see. That was the magnesium. Here's the calcium. Ooh, the calcium is bubbling along nicely there. And when I put my fingers under here, I can feel that it's getting warm. It's not as hot as it was with the magnesium, but it's still a pretty vigorous reaction. Much more reactive than the magnesium. I didn't see anything happening with magnesium. And then the manganese. Well, not a whole lot happening down there that I can see. So again, I'll put these under the microscope so that you can see what happens uh, with the water and the magnesium and the manganese. All right, you're looking at the magnesium under the microscope, magnesium and water. And you can see that there's quite a bit of fizzing going on on the surface, but it's not nearly as much as the calcium, which was uh, bubbling along nicely and making uh, heat that I could feel with my hand under the cup. So this one is less reactive than the calcium. Let's see how the reactivity compares to manganese. 
Okay, this is the surface of the manganese, about the best quality I can get. And you can see that there are bubbles on the surface. Not quite as bubbly as the magnesium, though. The manganese uh, does react with water, albeit uh, much slower. Fewer bubbles. It's not uh, coming off the mag manganese quite as much as it came off of the magnesium. So between the three, magnesium, um, I'm sorry, manganese is the least reactive. Magnesium is more reactive, and calcium, that one was the most reactive with water. So those are the results for the reactions of water with magnesium, calcium, and manganese, and hydrochloric acid with magnesium, calcium, and manganese. And what we observed was that the calcium was the most reactive of the three, magnesium was the next most reactive, and manganese was the least reactive of just those three elements. Next we'll do the other three metals. I'll put the water into the iron and into the nickel and into the copper and followed by water, uh, acid in the same three metals. And then we'll examine the surfaces to see if they have any fizzing like the other ones did. I moved the pieces of metal to a petri plate so that I could put them under the microscope, maybe get a better image. So this is the surface of the iron, and it looks like pretty much there's nothing going on there. There are no bubbles. Water doesn't react so much with iron, which is a good thing because if it did, then all those things out there that are made of steel, which contains iron, would begin to fall apart in the rain or the snow. Let's see about the nickel. There's the nickel. And it's pretty much the same story. Uh, no fizzy bubbles on the surface, so not reactive with water. And the copper, here's copper. Uh, nothing going on there either. So these three metals, not so reactive with water. There's no real difference between them in their water reactivity. Water doesn't really tell us much about which ones are more reactive than the others. So we'll look at the same metals uh, again, but this time with the acid. This is the surface of the iron with the hydrochloric acid, and you can see that there are tiny bubbles covering the surface, but not nearly as much of a reaction as was observed with the magnesium or the calcium or the manganese, which, which were bubbling uh, quite vigorously. Um, let's see how that looks with the nickel. Well, looking at the nickel here, doesn't seem to be nearly as much happening you can see along the edge there are some very tiny bubbles and as I look around this piece of nickel you know, I see teeny tiny bubbles here and there, a bigger bubble but for the most part not nearly as much bubbling action as was seen on the surface of the iron. Let's look over on the copper. Copper, clean and smooth, nothing happened in there. Hydrochloric acid is not reacting with the copper. Some students working with this may have seen a slight color change in their solution. That might be due to some uh, some corrosion on the surface of the copper. I tried to clean them all off with uh, some sandpaper first to prevent that. But looking on the surface of the copper, pretty much no bubbles. Not any reaction with the hydrochloric acid. The nickel, teeny tiny bubbles here and there and the iron, much more reactive. That one has far more teeny tiny bubbles. So between the three, when we were testing with water, the iron, the copper, the nickel, no reactions. But with the acid, the iron is more reactive, the nickel is less reactive, and the copper was the least reactive of all. Okay, so to review our results, uh, what we observed for the magnesium was that when it was combined with water, it had small bubbles all over the surface, and when it was combined with acid, it, it fizzed very quickly. It wasn't very hot, it was warm a little bit. Uh, compared to calcium, calcium reacted much more vigorously in water. It fizzed quickly and it was a little bit warm, and with the acid, it fizzed very fast, got very hot and smoked a little. So between magnesium and calcium, calcium is the more reactive. Manganese 
also reacted with water and with acid, but not quite nearly as much. There are a few bubbles on the surface when mixed with water, but not as much with magnesium as with magnesium or calcium. And also likewise with the acid. It did bubble on the surface, but it wasn't nearly as vigorous. The magnesium completely reacted. Uh, it was gone by the, by the end of the reaction. There wasn't a very big piece, but it also wasn't a very strong reaction. It didn't make that much heat. Calcium, of course, the most reactive of the three. And then looking at the last three metals, when iron, nickel, and copper were combined with water, they didn't react at all. So as a group, these three metals are less reactive than the others. But between them, iron showed that it reacted more than nickel or copper. It had many tiny bubbles on the surface in the acid. There are fewer tiny bubbles in the nickel, so it didn't react as much as the iron did. And the copper, no bubbles at all. So copper, the least reactive of all the elements tested. Let's put this together into a ranking. So when looked at just with the water reactions, potassium was the most reactive of all the elements that were in this experiment. It's the one that exploded in the water in the first demonstration video. Sodium was a little bit less reactive, didn't explode, but it was very vigorously moving around and sizzling. Lithium. Uh, uh, fizzing a bit, moving around, but not nearly as much as sodium, not explosive like potassium. The first three elements, far more reactive than any of the others tested, which is why they were done on a video demonstration, because I just don't have those metals in the lab. The ones that we did test in lab in water, calcium, the most reactive was warm and, and strongly fizzing. Magnesium uh, fizzed on the surface, not very warm. Manganese, very few bubbles on the surface. And the three other metals, no reaction at all. We can't tell which is most reactive or not. We can't rank them because they were all non-reactive. So that's why I just circled them. But when combined with the hydrochloric acid, now we can really tell them apart. The calcium was the most reactive in the acid. It got very hot and smoky. Magnesium, warm and very vigorously reacting, but not nearly as vigorous as the calcium. Manganese with many bubbles on the surface in the acid, um, but not reacting completely like magnesium and not reacting hot like calcium. Iron, some tiny bubbles all over the surface, more than nickel, which just had a few and copper had none. So based on the rankings of how reactive these elements are, we can begin to correlate this with some patterns in their electron configurations. That's what the analysis steps are for you to work out. So please make sure that you continue to move forward with this activity by looking at the next part, the analysis.